so I've dragged the floor panels, the OSB free panels, out to the back. I put um, fence sort of treatment on there. It's supposed to be brown, but it's not actually coloured it at all. Uh, so I've only done one side because the other, the other side is going to be indoors all the time. So the bottom side is never going to be seen again until it gets destroyed. So let's paint them all. And because there's not really much colour to it, I'm just going to write on, on there somewhere, bottom, so I know which side I've painted. I've done all three of them. It's all dry now, so that's that. Right, so there you go. I've just marked it on their bottom, so I know. Which side I painted. There you go. If you use some decent coloured treatment or something, some stain, you're going to see it. So you won't need to do that. But if you get the wick stuff, then uh, it doesn't look like it's going to stain it. But that's the brown colour which it's done nothing, it's just see-through basically. Right, so I've gone out and I've got some concrete blocks and now I'm just going to make the basic frame for the base and then once I'm uh, sure I've got it all square I'll then put the um, all the rest of the braces in so I'm going to do like a 16 inch on centre so Every 16 inches put a line and we'll put a uh, piece of wood across it, a plank of wood. Uh, that's all 2 by 6 stuff. Um, I've got these, the, these ones here, they're 3.6 metres exactly, um, straight from the shop. Uh, I've not had to cut them at all. Uh, the only thing I've got to cut are the, uh, the smaller ones, which I've got a 4.8 metre, I've got 4.8 metre uh, planks of wood. And I'm chopping them all in half, and then they will go in across there. I found it is cheaper to buy 4.8 meters rather than loads of 2.4s that are pre-cut. So five five minutes work, cut them all in half. That should be all right. All right. Um, once I've made the frame, um, I'm going to start pegging out the uh, where the uh, concrete blocks are going to go. As you can see here. loads of uh, air there all the rest of them seem to be on the ground so I reckon I'm probably gonna have to wake this one up a little bit this side there you go. I got some concrete just in case I've got some gravel and I've bought some new blocks so there they are these sorts of things I bought six of these and it's about to come out to about seven odd quid from Juicens uh, so I'm going to have uh, one on each corner and I'm going to have two in the middle just to brace the, the middle um, sort of two planks that go across. Right, I'm going to get cracking. But one thing I've got to remember, as I'm using the 3.6 as the, uh, the length, now the 2.4s that go across, I'm going to have to take into account the thickness of these bad boys. So each are four and a half centimetres, so that's, I've got to take off nine centimetres off the total. So a 2.4 size shed, 2.4 metres shed, I'm going to have to do, cut these, these ones here at 231. So that's two metres 31. Right, so I've trimmed them to length, in my case 2.31, and I'll put it together roughly like that. And I've measured it, and the total length uh, on the width, sorry, total width is 2.4 meters, and obviously, total length 3.6 as it was chopped in the factory. So uh, I believe them. So uh, now I'm going to go and get the nail gun out. And I'm going to go and chuck some nails in, make sure it's all square. And then I'm going to start um, cutting out where I want my uh, blocks and then leveling. All right. Right. Um, now what we're going to be doing is 
measuring up the uh, 16 inch gaps so basically <coughs> if you have a look at your tape measure it might be handy like mine and it's actually got them marked like that every 16 inches which makes it really easy so if you're crap at maths like me you just find the uh, the marks like that and mark them all off and that is it so every time we have one of those that's going to be the middle of the beam that goes across so uh, that's 16 inches on centre, they, they say, in, in the, uh, the shed building trade, as, as I've heard. So um, every mark, that's the middle. You put your timber across like that, and away you go. And I'll mark the same on the other side. There you go. Got lines on all of them now. Now I'm going to uh, make sure the frame's all square, stick a few nails in each corner and then um, I'll start putting the uh, timbers in between. Because I'm doing this on my own, I bought myself a nice brand new Dewalt nail gun. There you go. Beautiful machine this is excellent to play with. Oh, I've got some real big nails in there. What I'm going to do first of all is make sure the uh, the settings are okay and I'm going to practice on a couple of pieces of wood like that. Just make sure it's uh, it's all set right so, so I don't want nails hanging out and things like that and I don't want them to be fired all the way through. So I'll have a little go on that, double check it's all okay and I'll carry on. Right, after three attempts, I got it. So that's the first and second, and they've gone in. So I don't like that. I'd like it nice, flush finish. So uh, there's that. So uh, now I'm going to make sure the uh, frame's square, and I'm going to fire a couple of nails in each corner, and I'm going to stick a, a couple of screws in as well for good measure. So that's the size. I think they driven that massive nail all the way in. Excellent. Right. So, I've put a couple of nails in, right in the middle, like that. Square. And that's it for a minute. Now we uh, carry on around the, uh, the rest of the frame. And then, uh, then I'll start um, putting some of the uh, ribs in the uh, in the uh, middle part. Right. So I've nailed. I put two nails in each corner. So now I can lift it up, move it, and things like that. What I'm going to do though, before I move it and then sort of get it all out of centre and all that sort of stuff. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick a couple of um, planks in between to brace it a little bit and uh, and then I'll uh, get the uh, the blocks out and I'll start prepping to level it all out. Right, I've been um, nailing these planks across so I've got a few in place roughly and what I've seen is because I'm doing this on uneven ground you've got to be very careful when you're um, putting these nailing them in now that's nice and level there but I've had them all, yeah, all over the place there so uh, just when you're nailing it just make sure double double check it's all square and it's all like that slightly out 
but I have seen that some of this wood seems a little bit warped, so um, just be careful. And of course, this threw me a little bit, because that goes downwards, so it doesn't carry on straight. So I've, I had to sort of look at the whole piece of wood going on there to make sure it's level. But yeah, just carry on with that. I'm gonna do a few more. And then we're going to put it up on its end to get it out of the way and get these blocks down. Right, and that's all those planks put in. And I've, I've only just done the two nails each side at the minute. But it's all coming together. It's a bit of a ball lake doing it on uneven ground. Because you've got to try and get all those sort of uh, even as well and all square at the same time. But, if you're careful, you just manipulate the frame a little bit, you can actually get it nice and square. So what I'm going to do now, I've got one more uh, 4.8 metre um, piece of wood. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sort of do staggered joints going across here just gonna stagger them all the way up and um, hopefully that'll give us a, an extra little bit of um, strength well, there we go I measured because it's 240 mil across I have measured 120 all the way up put a line there and then what I'm gonna do when I put the wood in there I'm going to sort of like put one this side and then the next plank put it that side so stagger them so then I can nail it all and hopefully it will look quite good too right I put them all on breeze blocks now so what I'm doing I'm just sort of cutting around them with the spade so I know where they are. And I'm going to take the uh, bit of um, turf off it and dig down a little bit. And then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do next because I've got some post hole mix. So I might get the post hole digger, dig a little bit of an ink, sort of like a little foundation for the bricks to sit on. And then uh, go from there and then sort of use gravel to level it all up. But it's not too bad. Level's quite good as it is, even with that massive drop over there. But once I've uh, dug that one out, I might be able to stick another brick down there. And stick a, another brick in the middle in one of these. Keep the middle up. But going alright at the minute. I'm going to do the rest of them. And then remove the turf and then move this up against the wall out of the way and see how it goes. Right, so I've dug the turf out each corner and what I'm going to try and do is get one block right in the middle and that should line up with those two there. Those two there, look. So we've got that right smack bang in the middle. So I'm going to cut the turf out for that. And then that'll be the middle uh, support. I was going to put two lots in, two blocks in, but I think I'm going to need one more to uh, prop that one up because that's the lowest point. So obviously we start from the highest and then go to the lowest and just work up rather than digging down because it's a lot more work. All right. Right. They've all been leveled out a little bit. Got a bag of gravel next to each one. I think that's all I'm going to need. And then uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill it up to ground level so it's level with the grass and put the bricks on top and then go for a remeasure. What I'm going to do with this one, this is a low point. I've run into some uh, real hard stuff down there. So what I'm gonna try and do is just put a, uh, a block on top of that and another one on top of that. And hopefully 
it'll come out somewhere near level if not i'm gonna have to um get the sledge out and the uh, pickaxe and chip away at whatever's down there it's some sort of rock or something like that so i'm hoping it'll all sort of come out nice and level and it'll just be a case of adding a little bit of gravel here and there but if i have to dig down more here to take into account the uh, two bricks i'm going to need to use then uh, it's going to be a bit of hard work all right there we go well, there you go, I've filled all the holes up level with the ground with the gravel. That's the Wix gravel that I uh, mentioned in the uh, description, the list of stuff you need to buy. There you go. The problem hole, put a little bit of gravel in there just to fill the gaps, but it was just about level when I chucked the brick in without any, and but it moved around a little bit. So hopefully that's going to level it out and it'll, uh, it'll be just the right height. And then when I drop the frame on it, it'll all be nice and level and square. But we shall see in a minute. Also, I've got two and a half bags left. Gravel. Right, I've got all the blocks down and the frames on top of them all. So I'm happy with position. Now it's sorting out the level. As you can see, that's a little bit off, but it is showing that this side needs to come up. So, so I'm going to take a little bit of gravel out of there and see if I can just take it down a little bit. Half an inch, that might do that one. Over there, I just need to put a little bit of gravel because the other side's perfect. I've got that absolutely level. So I just need to put a little bit of gravel under the right hand side there to level that one up. A little bit more gravel this side on that block and that'll be level in the middle. And there, a little bit more gravel on the end. And the end one there. It's pretty much almost there. But it ain't too bad really. I don't think it's going to take much, so it's just um, add little bits of gravel and take little bits of gravel away. And then uh, we should be done. And I can start putting screws in and putting the strut up the middle. Right, starting to lose light now, but I think I've got it all level. It's been a right poor lake. But I got it there in the end. It's that, that low bit down there that was giving me the big problem but we've eventually done it got the middle one on as well so everything's good everything's all even so uh, tomorrow um, when I come down I'm going to be putting the uh, staggered strut all across the middle and then lay the uh, the flooring down and then that is the base phase done a nice two by six timber. Uh, I, I gave up with the concrete plan. I thought let's just use the gravel, bugger it. So I've put the gravel down, tamped it down a bit, stuck the bricks on top and used extra gravel or took some gravel away to keep it the level. But all done now. Um, I'm gonna get my head down, well-deserved rest, get washed because I've got mud all over me. And uh, tomorrow's a new day and we'll get it completed and then um, I've got about a week or two to wait until the rest of the timbers arrive for the uh, the main construction phase so see you tomorrow then all right the second day and I've had an idea and I'm gonna stick, stick a little bit of that post screen around the uh, blocks uh, just to keep them a little bit more solid and then I'm going to get the middle frame done. Right, that's done. Now it's not going to hold any weight or anything like that, but what I'm hoping that that uh, concrete's gonna do when it dries is just hold the uh, the blocks where they are. 
So uh, when I lift up the frame and everything to mess about and you know all that lot, it'll all stay true um, to where I've leveled it off, and I don't have to start again re-leveling it. Um, also, there are some big gaps uh, where I dug down in the corner on here, which I had all the problems with, so it just fills a bit of a gap up. So hopefully some of the, the sort of concrete dust will fall in between the cracks of the, the gravel and stick it together a little bit better, but the experts have always tell me it's a load of crap, but um, in my mind it seems common sense really. But, um, we'll see in the future, I know it's no crack off and everything, but if I can keep a bit of the gravel together then that's cool. Right, so we're going to go and get the watering can now, put a little bit of water over it and then um, leave that and I'll go and cut some wood. Water. So I'm just going to chuck it over the uh, dry, the powder concrete post mix, and uh, while I'm cutting all the uh, the wood up, hopefully it'll be dry by the time I come back to have a little play. Oh. Job done. Right, now I'm going to get on the chop saw and uh, cut all the stacked joints in the middle and get them all attached and then uh, after that I'm going to stick some uh, one screw through the middle of all the two nails that I put into all the uh, timbers going across and uh, I'll put a screw through all these the middle ones as well that I've nailed well I've cut this one to fit now so I've checked it's all level and square couple of nails in. Inside. So I'll do that, staggering it all up for the rest of it. Two nails in each side keep it all nice and stable and then uh, afterwards I'll go around to every single timber and stick um, a screw, a nice big screw right through the middle of it. Of course when you put your screws in uh, you got to remember drill the hole, pilot hole, do the countersink so I've got like I've got three different drills ready to go. I've got the impact driver to drive the screws in, I've got a, uh, a drill with the drill bit in, the wood drill bit to drill the pilot hole and I've got the uh, the other one to dig in a little countersink um, hole so uh, that way your wood, your wood doesn't split which you don't really want, you don't want to split wood Get the old roll, measure twice, cut once, because I almost messed up back there. There you go, messed up with this one, so uh, what I'm going to do, it's a smaller gap on the end, so I'm going to leave this for the end and I'll just chop it to size there. You see, you see what's happening, I'm just going to do that for the rest of the uh, base and um, I'll switch on again at, at the end. There you go, that's all the uh, middle done and um, just in case, I, I don't think I'll mention it. But the reason why it's staggered is so I can get my nail gun in there. And uh, well, if, even if you had a hammer and you're hammering nails in, you still need a bit of space to whack them in. So that's the reason why I staggered them and didn't do like a straight line all the way through. But looks all right. Don't think we've had any problems there. Just a little bit of mismeasurement. 
Um, next thing to do, we're going to go around with the uh, the drill countersink and the screws, and then put a screw in every joint uh, just for a little bit of extra strength. Make sure it stays together. All galvanised screws, they ain't the rust. Um, and then it'll be um, floor time. All right, I'll be back soon. Now for screws. They go in for a uh, drink and then they're going to come out and they're going to put the uh, OSB free floor down. And then uh, that'll be it for today. Uh, let's just wait for the rest of the timber. Just had a thought before I do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the frame up and I'm going to stick the old uh, anti weed cover in down and then chuck some gravel over the top of it to keep it down and maybe a bit of bark and then uh, that should keep the underside of the shed pretty clean. You don't want weeds going up into it and growing in there and distorting all the wood and all that sort of shit. So um, I'm going to push that up now, it's going to be heavy and uh, get that fitted. And away we go. Right, that's all the uh, weed suppressing uh, fabric down. I'll chuck some uh, the rest of my gravel on there just to weigh it down. I think that'll do for now. Um, so I'll get the frame back on there, make sure it's all squared up. And then I'll bring the floor down. There you go, and uh, that's the first board of OSB3, so we're going to stick two more down there. And then it's uh, sort of square up the uh, frame and then um, nail it all down. They're bloody heavy. Right, so now I've just got to uh, square it all up. The frame's a little bit out of square at the minute. So uh, we'll get it all squared up and then there's going to be a bit of excess on both sides. On two sides because there's something like um, 1,220 mil and 2, 2,400 mil as well. So I'm going to have a little bit to trim off. It is definitely looking like I am either a victim of warping wood or when I've been putting in the, um, the slats going across I sort of bowed the, the main strut out. Um, so I'm going to have to do a bit of tinkering to try and get it sort of back into back so it's square. But yeah, to be honest, there's going to be, you're going to have the feather edge stuff going all up from the bottom there. So it's going to cover some of the uh, very slight stuff that's out. Um, so I may get away with it. I don't know. We're going to have to see. I'm hoping I'll get away with it. But I'm going to keep tinkering around with it, see if see I can get it as square as possible. I stood all over the uh, the board there and it's really stable, it's really solid, like you can feel it's, uh, it's really, really solid. So um, at least that's a good thing, eh? Right, I'm going to crack on and uh, try and get it all levelled out. Then. Right, I sorted out the bow in on the end there by uh, cutting out one of the... Uh, the little strengthening bars going across because that was obviously a bit too tight it was pushing it out and bowing it so I could do the same with the end over there and um, there is bowing by the looks of it going down the length so uh, I think that might have been how I was storing the wood which is a bit of a bummer but I could with a little bit of tinkering maybe do some saw holes on the um, 
timber going across the cross beams and then maybe screwing it together or getting a um, some sort of bracket to strengthen it up but then that would stop me putting the floor down but I have got time to tinker so I've got a couple of weeks until I get the rest of the wood for the frame so I might as well get it right now and get it all done properly so uh, what I'm going to do is make a couple of um, cuts down the uh, the middle bars so I can hopefully bring it in slightly and uh, see how we go right catch you a bit well I've just done a couple of um, measurements and double checks now what I found is it's not actually bowing at all so it's the uh, it's the actual OSB boards themselves that are out so what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to overlap them where, sort of where I want them to lay I'm going to have to do like a pencil line underneath and then get the circular saw and just trim the uh, the waste section off and um, sort of it will be square but um, what, what's happened here then by the looks of it is the, the OSB isn't square at all and it's put me <laughs> right out so I suppose that's experience for you so um, now I know not to trust the, uh, the factory measurements and things. So uh, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to uh, sort of centralise the boards um, and then um, go around with a pencil underneath, score you know, all, all the way through and then get the old um, circular saw out and chop the waste bit off and then uh, attach it all. And then hopefully it'll be nice and square and then I'll get the uh, canvas put it over and then we'll wait for the timber to arrive. Right, before you start, always remember your goggles, I just forgot them. So, what I've done then is I've just cut a very thin sliver off that side, so that should all even up. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the board around and then I'm going to do the other side, cut the other spare piece off, flip it back over and it should all fit nicely. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Now, see if it fits. Much better. It was the OSB. So, I'm going to get cracking and I'm going to do the other two boards and then um, that's me finished oh, oh I'm going to have to nail it all down of course see ya just on the uh, last one now just got to uh, trim the excess wood off around the OSB and that's me done There you go. Last bit, just gonna nail it down now, and that's me done. Right, that's that lot done now. Um, I'm just gonna go and put some screws in, uh, just for a bit of extra security. I just stick a couple of screws in each side, on each. Um, edge of each panel that should be enough I reckon and that is a wrap for today I just gotta wait for a couple of weeks and then the uh, rest of the timber comes so that's the shed base happy with that but I've just been going around putting the uh, I've drilled the holes all round countersunk put the uh, screws in and I've gone around with a hammer just tapping them in. As I'm going, I'm just checking the uh, the nail the nail guns put the nails in properly. 
because obviously if they haven't gone in properly when you go to put your frame up it's gonna send it off like you know so as you're going around tapping the nails in to get it located in the hole see any nails that are sticking a little bit proud to give them a whack and last thing And that is me done. But one thing I might do, uh, just to be extra cautious, I might go and get the uh, paintbrush out with some of the wood treatment. I just go around all the edges that I've just cut. Just be I mean, it's OSB free. It's supposed to be sort of damp resistant and things apparently. But if you're extra careful, it might last that little bit longer. So that's it sorted there you go so that's everything done now um, it's all covered up bits of timber that I might need for later underneath the canvas any bits that are treated and things they've gone on top weighed it down with some of the um, squares of turf that I cut out for the blocks and that is the base done so um, keep your eyes peeled for the next instalment uh, the next time uh, when the timber arrives I'm going to be making the roof trusses um, so I've got to make I think five of them and then it will be the frames of the walls then putting it all together um, and then it will be the feather board of the fort then roofing and uh, I think that may be it and it's all the stuff inside electrics and things like that so keep your eyes out if you uh, enjoyed this video and it helps you out uh, give us a thumbs up if you thought it was crap give us a thumbs down nice one Chris on UK tour reviews I'll see you next time